In this video, Jordan Peterson talks about human emotions and motivation systems. There's a lot of your nervous system that's not in your head. The, you know, the, the motor and sensory systems are distributed throughout your body. Your spine is smart enough so that if it gets severed and we put you over top of a treadmill, suspend you, you can walk. You don't know you're walking and you can't control it, but your legs will do a perfectly good job of walking without you being involved at all. So, you know, your spine is brain tissue for all intents and purposes. Your brain is distributed through your body. And so, and then, you know, it's evolved so that it's pretty good at going around specifying what it needs. And so, you know, we talked about the hypothalamus the other day. That was it. And how it, you know, accounts for what I called sub-personalities that are motivated towards particular ends. And those ends are, you know, obviously the things that we would identify as fundamental biological necessities. But then they transform themselves as we interact socially into more and more complex fundamental biological necessities. You know, because you, it's, it's a tricky thing because people talk about needs as if they're biologically instantiated. You know, like they're the fundamental building elements of motivation. But it's not really that obvious, eh? Because, you know, you might say, well... Being hungry is a biological need, but being a doctor isn't. Well, not really, because, you know, if you do end up being a physician, you pretty much solve the food acquisition problem permanently, right? So it's just a higher order manifestation of the same thing, and it's higher order because instead of just eating once, you eat every day for the next 40 years, and instead of just feeding you, you feed you and your family and maybe some other people too. So thinking of, of that as something that isn't rooted in biology is not accurate. It's, it's a kind of a continuous complexification from the, from the simple, local, time-bound, uh, immature sub-personalities that can only fulfill themselves in this moment and with help to the development of those circuits, which I would say is your personality, that are capable of providing you with what you need in order to live and to be attractive to other people across very large spans of time. It's like a tree, you know, it's like a tree expanding upward. It's a good, it's a good metaphor. So, all right, so that's fine. So that's motivation sets up your perceptual frame. And so people often talk about motivation as if it's a drive or a need, something like, not that those terms are particularly well defined. A drive, I suppose, is a deterministic sequence of motor output, something like that. But it's not accurate, because the motivation actually, it specifies what you look at. It specifies right what you see. It's, and then it specifies as well what you're going to respond to emotionally. So just imagine this. Say I'd offered a $10,000 prize for the person who counts the number of basketballs correctly. And then, you know, you're doing your best to count the number of basketballs in the monkey illusion, and somebody stands up in front of you like this and blocks your view. Well, what, what, what emotion are you going to feel? It's negative emotion, right, in all likelihood, and so that might be anxiety, because you're, you're not going to win. It might be fear, it's like, or, or anxiety because you're not going to win, but also, like, fear because what the hell is this crazy person doing? <laughs> Anger. Right? That's another negative emotion, although there's a positive attack element to it. You know? um, frustration, disappointment, maybe some grief, like a whole undifferentiated mess of negative emotions. Well, why? Well, in some sense, the motivational system specifies the map and the, and the goal. It's, it's a little more complicated than that, because it also specifies where you are. But it's like you can think about it as a map with a, with a destination. That's why stories are like that, you know, because we inhabit little maps like that all the time. And then what emotions do, roughly speaking, is tell you whether or not things are going the way you want them to as you're on that path. And so the emotions, in some sense, have to have a motivational specification before they're, before they're, uh, before they're properly functional. But what should you get angry at? Well, generally you get angry at things that either interfere with your progression towards a valued goal or upset the entire sub-personality, you know, that, that contains the goal itself. That's a more, that's a more uh, what would you call it? That's a more serious 
failure, you know, if you have to. It's one thing to fail when you're trying to do something. It's another thing to fail so hard you have to give up the whole project. We, we would rather just fail at some, some element than have to give up the whole project, right? It's one thing to fail an exam. It's another thing to fail out of university. So, and, you know, I think the reason for that, I thought about that for a long time. Why is it worse to fail out of university, assuming you want to be in university, than it is to fail an exam? How does your brain compute that? You know, because you can't tell all the consequences, right? So it's not self-evident, but it seems to me that it's something like, um, you think about these, these functional sub-personalities as having a temporal and spatial range of application. So if you're a university student, you're sort of stabilized for like four years, right? And wherever you go, you can say, people say, well, what do you do? And you can say, I'm a university student, and everybody's happy about that. You know, it's, it's not, from an economic perspective, it's probably worse than being unemployed, right, in some sense. And, but if, you can't just go tell people that you're unemployed and then you have a nice little, you know, high status slot in society. It doesn't work that way, but you can do that as a university student. You know, so it fulfills your social obligations and it makes you feel like you're doing something at least vaguely useful and, you know, I mean, apart from the learning and all the other things that are positive about it. So what happens is, is that map basically covers a, a space and time. The time is four years and the space is everywhere you go during those four years. And then if that map burns up, it's like you're exposed on all fronts for that entire four-year period. And that might even be the two years previously, Right. For example, because it's strange to think that, but if you bail out of university halfway through your third year, you've also destructured the map that you use to organize your memories in some sense of the previous two and a half years, right? Because first of all, they were the memories of someone who was doing just fine and going through university, and now all of a sudden they're the memories of someone who failed. Those aren't the same memories. And so it's weird that, you know, it's weird that an error can alter the past, but but, but it can, and, and often does. I mean, break, any, any relationship breakup that's of any significance will do exactly the same thing, especially if you are betrayed, right? It's like, it's not just the present and the future that dissolve into chaos and take you on a little trip to the underworld. It's also your revision, your, the necessity of revising your past. So anyways, you, so then I would say, well, failing a class, well, the class only structures you in some sense and focuses you for a certain subset of the general going to university map. So it's going to be less traumatizing to do poorly on a class than it is to, to fail out of university because the amount of space and time that those respective maps covers differs. And so what you're trying to do always is to lay out a, a functional game, that's a good way of thinking about it, on the space-time territory that you inhabit. And if you understand that, then you can start to understand a little bit about emotions. So, 